So good evening, everybody. Wanted to take a moment and uh, just introduce what is going to be an absolutely amazing conversation. Um, we had an opportunity of sitting down and speaking with uh, Miss Kenya Stevens along with um, her partners. And so uh, just to give you a little background about what happened, we had an amazing about two hour conversation, but technology wasn't on our side a little bit. So the first probably about 45 minutes of the conversation was cut out, but this is actually part two um, of the conversation. Was going to completely redo it, but there's so much great information that's being shared right here by Ms. Kenya Stevens and her partners as well. So uh, listen in as myself, along with uh, Charles James and Ms. Alexis, uh, speak about polyamory uh, with Ms. Kenya Stevens and... Uh, <laughs> Miss Kenya Stevens and uh, a couple of the individuals, so stay tuned. Oh, all right. So I have the recording on, but you know some of this will will edit out, whatever. So what I'll do is um, yeah. just kind of bring it on back in and uh, most, introduce uh, you guys, and then I'm we'll just kind of um, just ask a couple alive. of questions from there. Anybody no got big. any? Uh, I feel like anything pop. Up? I shoot the shot. Back in. Oh, there Charles. Coming in. Get back in. There you go. All right. Let Charles back in. Uh, there you go. What up, Charles? Yeah. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Just like the fajita. I write what I live. My life in the speaker. Lexus, what's your name? Huh? <laughs> Where did I go? To get some wine? <laughs> hey so what we gonna do we're gonna bring in this is listen we're having a discussion with regard to um sexual communication uh and we uh you know we're we're speaking with miss kenya stevens and we actually have uh two other guests that have joined um as well so we're gonna let them introduce themselves in a moment but uh i don't know i don't know yeah i, I kind of learned a little something a second ago I'm, I'm still on the, I, you know, I don't know, Charles. I'm still on the on the on the one dozen the, the one dozen orgasms. I don't, that that was that was we had to take a few notes on that one. <laughs> no, that's real. This, this last that last conversation was like drinking from a fire hose. Yeah, trying to take it all in, process it, and yeah. That's why I think of all times we didn't have a lot to say because we were like students and hearing things for the first time. I know I learned some things. So listen, I think that we're gonna have to do a a, a part three and, and just invite <laughs> in other individuals. Uh, you know, we're going to go live with this one. Uh, uh, you know, but we'll we'll talk about that because this is definitely interesting. But um, I want to. Um, give a moment and first of all thank you to everybody who's joining this is the understanding a man podcast thank you to everybody who has um you know been supporting uh subscribing please continue to do so share with your friends and family as we are moving through um just this space right here uh inside of sexual communication something that's extremely important inside of marriage um and and relationships that are existing and so uh uh kenya you was kind of breaking it down in the last in the last one, you know, telling, but I was going to say, uh, Elam, Elam, we are the absolute 100% best love coaches on this planet. It's, it's mm -hmm. bigger than psychology. It's bigger than therapy. This is a movement. It's a community. We have 5,000 members in our love Academy. We have 5,000 mm -hmm. videos online. We have, I mean, it's just incredible. It's immense. We have 14 books. The only reason why it's not super widespread and everybody's on it, like, Yangon Benzant or something like that is because we're poly. And so people right. are afraid of that. So they, they can be afraid. That's that's fine. But then they stay away from this kind of real information. You know, mm. the fear keeps you away from what you really, on the other side of that fear mm. is freedom, baby, and laws mm. and real healing. And that's what we provide. And we will continue to provide no matter who come and who don't, because we have the people who need us. 
And you said 14 books. Can, can you uh, share with us the last book that you were talking about and kind of give us an overview of the, the last book that you were talking about? Come on, plug. Plug it. <laughs> yeah. Most indubitably, this one is Up Level Communication. It was written by my first husband and myself, and it's about communication. We can give you a demonstration of re how real communication is supposed to look, how we don't argue. There's no reason for us to argue. And so this book shows you how to express any emotion, even anger and rage, without an argument. And mm -hmm. that is just a powerful, powerful tool that we use in our household with our children and in our community. Mm, you know what? I'm not going to let the, 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 the phrase that slid in there real quickly. Um, you said, uh, my first husband. All right. So I want to take a moment um, because you have two uh, gentlemen sitting next to you right now. So I want to take a moment and just have them introduce themselves as we kind of walk into this conversation. Uh, so uh, my man with the uh, to the left, wait, to your yeah, to your right. Um, we can go right to left. What's happening? Elim is Rakem Sekou, also known as Carl Stevens. I've uh, been with Kenya for about 24 years. Uh, and we, we run the Love Academy together, Progressive Love Academy, uh, doing the coaching, teaching the class about relationships and personal empowerment, and also writing the books. Really? And, and how many years has that been? She said 15 years? 24 yeah, years. Guys have been we'll have our 25th wedding anniversary this, uh, this August. Okay. And um, well, you, you've been running the Academy for about 15 years, you're saying? Yeah, it's about 15 years. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, d definitely uh, appreciate you joining uh, with us here. And, uh, uh, sir, with the with the blazer that I might need to cop real quick. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, my name is Tiger, Tiger Moonstone, um, and I am Kenya's second husband. We've been together for about seven years. And so doing our thing there. Okay. All right. Tiger? Yes, sir. Come Tiger. on, Tiger. All Tiger right. Moonstone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and, now, and Elon, so, we, you uh, should take a, Elon, you should take a moment. Um, mm -hmm. I think we need to talk and break down the looks on Charles's face since he came on. <laughs> man. We're talking about the multiple <laughs> orgasms. We're talking about I the multiple try, I was to... That brother is in complete <laughs> awe and amazement. It's written all over his face. No, see, for me, for me, this is so, this is so brand new. And so I'm an aggressive learner. So all I, my faces have all to do with I'm absorbing every single thing that's being said. <laughs> every single thing that's being said. That's what's up. That's, that's what's good. up. That's good. So, um, you know, and first of all, uh, Carl and, and uh, excuse me, Rakim, do you mm -hmm. want to be Carl or Rakim? Which yeah, Rakim one is good. Rakim is good. Rakim and, and, and Tiger, definitely thank you uh, for being on. And so, uh, I want to start off by saying, uh, so we're in, we're, if, we, if we started talking about the, the, the polyamorous uh, area, um, if one of you could just take a moment and just break down, what is, what is polyamory? You want to talk about it? Sure. But I mean, polyamory is just having many loves. You know, that means that you love many. Poly means many. Amory means loves. So you can love as many people as you desire in polyamory. Okay, it's not mm -hmm. polygyny where the man can have many loves. Okay, okay. That polygyny means many wives. Okay, and then there's polyandry, which means the woman can have many loves, but the men can't. That's polyandry. So both of us, I mean, all three of us can love other people as well, but we just actually live together in the house because they're both my husbands. And so we're polyamorous. If we were polyandrous, that means that my partners cannot have other partners. Okay. So there's like four or five different <laughs> definitions inside of this poly. So you got put. <laughs> so Alexis is doing the same thing because I got confused. So hold on. So you got polygamy, yes. right? You got polyandry. Yes. You have, uh, and then ooh. Polyamory. I'm, I'm, I'm gone already. I'm gone. So <laughs> Somebody you have, help me. So you, you said polygamy first. Mm -hmm. Polygamy, under the umbrella of polygamy, is either polygyny, one man, many wives, or polyandry, one wife, many husbands. So polygamy, polygamy is a term that refers to the one and then many. That makes sense. And then polyamory refers to many, many, meaning you know, you're free to love based on how you want to love. 
polyamory is a little bit different from say like open relating polyamory people discuss the rules of how they want to, to relate with other people inside polyamory. So if people could have rules. So if you line up 10 polyamorous couples, they might all do it differently. As opposed to open relating, which is like, look, you know, you do your thing. I do, I do my thing. I'll love you and respect you. You love me and respect me. And that's just what it's going to be. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that's clear. Processing. Pro I'm, I'm processing. Uh, <laughs> you so know what my saying? question is: My question is, how did this start? Like, for and and I would say definitely like for 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 my brother Tiger. Mm -hmm. Like, how did? I got a couple questions. So, right. <laughs> so Kenya, you got married to what's my brother's name? Rakim. 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 Rakim right. Rakim. Yeah. You got married to Rakim. Were y'all both polyamorous at the same time when you met, or was it something that you grew into in your marriage? That's number one. And then number two, Tiger, how did how did it come along that that you connected uh, um, right. uh, romantically with Miss Kenya, and how how does that work? It's absolutely fan. It's it's absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> Yeah, so for Kenya and I, we just kind of evolved into it naturally. We were monogamous initially. Uh, we had some events in our relationship that kind of opened some things up in terms of uh, realizing some stuff. Uh, I wanted polygyny originally. I wanted additional wives to be a part of my family. Uh, Kenya had an experience where she actually fell in love with another man. Like she expressed that to me, right? Because we had open communication in our marriage. She said, oh, I'm having feelings of love for somebody else. Later on in our marriage, I had a feelings of in love for another woman. So her and I talked about that and kind of broke that down. And we were surprised we had those feelings because we thought when you get married that that stuff kind of goes away and you're just into your wife and into your husband. So we knew about cheating and infidelity, but that was, not, that was nothing we ever really entertained or really had a, an awareness of. So we finally got to a point where we discussed you know, well, what do we do about the fact that we have these other feelings? And that led us into the exploration about being open in our, in our marriage. Okay. Okay. So, so is it that the, um, so after you got married, the, the, um, I guess the desire to be with, uh, to be with more than one person came out afterwards, or you kind of knew about it beforehand or something had, it seemed like that there was there an event, that said, okay, this is where we're going to move to, or, I, you know. I think, I, yeah. yeah, I don't think anybody knows when they get married that your desire for others does not go away. It doesn't go away. Our parents don't tell us. And that I, think that's, I think that's interesting to, for, you, for you to say. I want you yeah, to well, expand on I mean, that. nobody really tells us the truth, mm -hmm. that this is not going to just stop your desire for mm -hmm. others. So that was ongoing. But uh, and, and on top of that, the desire is not something that's just superficial or fleeting. Like when we say desire, we mean like you really have love. feelings of love and attraction. Like these are deep things that keep you up at night. Like that kind mm -hmm. of desire, like the kind of stuff that makes people go out and have other relationships on the side or behind their spouse's back, like real stuff. We're so, not talking about, uh, it, we're, we're not talking about a lust situation, more of an emotional pool. Yeah. Um, where it's obvious that you have feelings for someone else. And so you all are saying that once you guys have the open conversation, you both had that experience and said, wow, this is something that I've been feeling too, yes. and decided to explore this lifestyle. Yes. Sure. Yeah. And initially, you know, what, what the way it came about was, you know, I came to Kenya and said, hey, I'm in love with this other woman. We talked about that. She met the woman, like very open, transparent, the whole thing. And I said, well, I want to add her to the family, like the whole polygyny thing again, right? Multiple wives. And Kenya was like, well, why don't I be, have the, the right to do the same thing? Can I have other partners as well? I'm like, fuck no. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so we negotiated hey, that for hey, about you, two years. No, 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 no. So can we stop right here for a second, Rakim? Let's stop right here. Okay. Okay. So... So, so, and, and this goes to kind of the question that Charles was leading into, and I don't know, Tiger, if you had a chance to really ask that, but, okay, so you the main man, Rakim, and I'm just going to say it like that, and, you know, no disrespect of it, I, I, I feel like that that's what, you were the main man, 
and then here comes Tiger, and the normal ego of a man is like, like you said, oh, no, that's not going down. How did that transition happen to whereas you were okay with Tiger coming in? Yeah, so it's interesting. I was like the average man in the West, in, you know, in the United States and, and modern culture, and I thought it was okay for me to have multiple women. And I didn't understand the concept of a woman having multiple women. Like, I didn't even get, like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Right. Like, right. I, didn't, I don't know what that was. Like, where did they do that at? Like, what is that? And so it was natural in my mind to have multiple women. And it wasn't until I went through, we, Kenya and I went through a Tantra training where we learned about sexuality. We learned about the feminine, the masculine, and stuff like that. And that's when my Tantra teacher said that Rakim, you know, if you really want to honor, you know, the women in your life and the feminine the right way, you have to allow them to be free and express themselves in the way they desire to express themselves. And you have to love them through that. Like that's what a man can actually do. That's what he does if he wants to love a woman properly and protect her properly, et cetera. So because I have respect for him, that opened me up to consider allowing her to have other partners, allowing. if you want to put it that way. <laughs> and so after, after kind of meditating on that and thinking about that, I said, you know what, if I'm going to have all these other girlfriends, I guess it is fair for you to have other boyfriends. And here we are. So where did, church. So, Go ahead, Charles. So how does this, how does this work? Um, from a, uh, so when you look at the, the, the concept of all of you being married, does that, does that, are, is that an agreement between you guys emotionally and spiritually that, that you call, you call her your, your wife and she calls you her husband? Yes. Because there's, there's no, I don't, I don't know if there's any legal ramifications that, that, that come in that with it being paperwork. Yeah, in terms of the legal stuff, I mean, Kenya and I are legally married mm -hmm. on paper, that kind of thing. Uh, her and Tiger are not legally paperwork married because that's gotcha. illegal in the United right. States. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. Gotcha. But from our standpoint, the term husband or wife is yeah. not like just a title based on legal yeah. paperwork. It's based on the actual relationship Absolutely. between mm -hmm. the people. And that's Absolutely. why Kenya refers to Tiger as her husband. Gotcha. And me as her husband. Gotcha. Wow. So let so, me say, let, let go ahead, Lex. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. Um, so it's just the three of you guys, and you're dating others. So you all are exclusive in that being you have two husbands, you all share one wife, but you are dating others, or is this it here? Just the three of you guys. Yeah, so we're allowed to date anyone. That's the whole base of polyamory, is the many loves. So by dating somebody, you're going to get some emotional attachment there. You're going to start feeling those feelings of love. And you, just because you get those feelings, you're not saying that I no longer love my other partner. I no longer love my wife or, you know, anything like that. You're including them in there with the understanding that we are in a relationship with one another. So it's not that you're just out there hopping from person to person to person. You're developing a relationship with every single person that you're with you're developing that love with every person you're with so, so tiger with I, I didn't i didn't mean to interrupt you no, go ahead go ahead Charles. um so are we uh, uh, with you guys' relationship the only sexual boundary would be the 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 relationships that you explore outside of your connection have to be genuine connections not necessarily but you so you can't just get your rocks off no, 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 it's nothing like that. I mean, everybody wants to get the rocks off, but you don't want to just go out there and just start leaving just this trail of heartbreak and hurt, mm -hmm. you know, having one night stands or anything like that. Absolutely. You want to develop a relationship with that person. Now, let, let me interject. <laughs> 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 I got to say, hold I got to say, hold say hold a few hold things. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go it's, ahead, not, go ahead. it's it's not quite like that for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I I do he what the fuck I want to do. Hundreds so, of women. Again, you gotta understand, like with me and Kenya, we've been married and together longer. Right. And so our relationship has matured in a certain way. 
And, you know, we kind of had to pave this road on our own. There was no like books or coaches or whatever we could refer to. Like we just had to figure it out. But at this point in my life, again, the open life is whatever I want to do. If that's a one night fan or get my dick sucked in the bathroom at the club or whatever, like that's, I'm all, I'm, I'm cool with that. Like that's, I live that life. Now I also build solid relationships with other women. You see what I'm saying? So I have long term relationships, but I, I'm at the point in my life where I do what I want to do. And that's just how it's going to be. So, now, so now his, I, I, <laughs> good, good, wait. I'm sorry. Wait. I have Go so ahead, many Jeff. awesome questions. Okay. So how do you guys um, deal with the, are there monthly, uh, like, are there monthly, like, doctor visits? Oh, so doctor like, visits? Do that's my STDs. No. Yeah, as far as like, that's a is, as far as like keeping is keeping the 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 atmosphere of your sexual relationship at home healthy. As far yeah. as you get what I'm saying, like the sexual. No, I, and I, I think that I think that's a great question because if, if if people were to even understand, and I think I think Charles, this is where you're going with it, mm -hmm. because we're just like, okay, if you're if you're allowed to be out here shaking and moving, but then you know, Rakim, you you this is this is your wife, right? Um, okay, and then uh, Tiger, if you you know uh, be in the club and you know be in the bathroom or whatever, you know how 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 do you keep that trust level on the from an illness perspective? Uh, you know we're in Atlanta, okay, okay, yeah, can't gotta, really do all that, yeah. okay. Well, all we can tell, listen, your listening audience is to use whatever type of protection that you need. Um, you know, we can't give you guys our particular, because just like I told you, big dick don't matter. Women can have orgasms up to the crown. We, you know, we have different ideas about illness and different ideas about that. So we don't share that unless you are an Academy member or a client, but okay. I would tell your listening audience, use the type of protection that you want to use. Okay. okay. We don't do STDs. I've never had an STD. I told you how many men I've been with. I don't, wow. that's not my paradigm. I don't live on that yeah. frequency. So that's just something that people who feel that as a need, they got to do it. You know, just like if they feel the coronavirus or virus or something, they have to do it. It's, this is what, where you are. If that's where you are, you have to do the protection and however you want to do that. We have a way to do that. So let me ask this question, Rakim. It would it, it so as a man, the one thing that uh, we would sometimes would some men would think is that uh, how in the hell can you um, be okay with another person sleeping with your wife? Yeah, and to be honest, Elam, that took some adjustment. You know, what I'm saying like I had to to. Uh, to kind of battle my ego around that. Like I said, I didn't understand the concept of a woman having multiple men on any level. Like I couldn't even fathom that, you see what I'm saying? And so I really had to ask myself, you know, why do I have that belief? Um, I've had some jealousy issues around Kenya when she was dating other men when we first got into this. Um, and I had to deal with that. Like, why do I feel jealous? Is it insecure? Am I worried about my sexuality? Am I worried about my masculinity? Am I worried that somehow this man's going to be better than me sexually? And that's where my insecurity and fear and all that stuff come from. So I had to investigate all that as a man. And as I did, and I realized that, you know, I'm confident in who I am as a man and as a sexual being and et cetera, et cetera, then I didn't have any worry about that. You know, and I realized, again, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to be connected uh -oh. to my partners, et cetera. And so I'm okay with her reflecting who I am as well. Look, Charles got the church finger up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, so, okay. So, so Rakim, so you're like, so you're totally, because, because Kenya has spoke eloquently and very passionately about the topic of, 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 of the, the total body type orgasm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, how did you adjust to like, you're in your room. I don't know how, and, and I got another question. So first question is this. <laughs> I got so many questions. First question is this. Is it like a, is it, is it like an, do you guys live on an intimacy, intimacy schedule? 
Ooh, or is it like, question. hey, I'm spending time with Tiger tonight, or I'm with Rakim tonight, or is it just like, hey, however I feel, I'm hooking up with whoever I feel connected to for the, for the day? Like, how does that, what, what's that family uh, communication like on the topic of sex? I'm just thinking, just let me just say this real quickly. I'm just going to listen to Rakim, you know, the the rapper, so much differently now when I just <laughs> – I just – that just came to my mind. I'm sorry, Rakim. Go ahead. Do, do you say – Well, yeah, I, I – again, again, I don't do schedules. Like, that's okay. not my thing. Um, so, so here's a reveal for you and your audience, just so you guys are clear. Um, probably about three years ago um, – when one of my partners was living with us, one of my girlfriends. Yeah, his us, ladies have lived here too. Um, you know, you kind of, again, this is a process that you go through. And I got into a thing where I said, you know what? I don't want to engage in obligatory sex anymore. So when you're married monogamously, you have to show up sexually and intimately for your wife because she's your only outlet, just like you're her only outlet. You see what I'm saying? Supposedly. So, you know, I was open for about, I guess, 10 years or so. And I said, you know, why am I engaging in oblig obligatory sex? And so I made a decision at that time, about two and a half, three years ago, to not engage sexually with Kenya at this particular time. And we haven't been actually intercourse sexually active for the past three years. What? Which is great because it was so obligatory. We were just like, oh, so married people have to have sex and be in love. But that's not even true. Where do we get that? No, we're friends. We're best friends. Why can't we be best friends and be married? And so we started to explore that. And the thing about Kenya and I, you know, when you look at it honestly, is our relationship and our marriage was never based on our sexual connection. Never. So we were more intellectual. Like, so when we first started dating, we would go and we would go sit in restaurants all night and talk metaphysics and, and religion and philosophy and what's going on with black people. Like we did that every day for months. And so that was our primary foundation. We had this intellectual bond, which is why we were able to start the Academy, the Prog Progressive Love Academy. And so that's our foundation. And so we share like amazing intimacy, you know what I'm saying? And in terms of the sex thing, like we always talk about, like we could have sex tonight. Like it's like it could be, it's right on the edge. Like we have fun, we joke around, we we're always flirting, we're that kind of stuff. Tonight? No. no. <laughs> oh Lord, no. 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 y'all keep talking, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so there, there was that. There's the ob there's the obligatory sex piece, and then in addition to that is the, you know, when Kenya and Tiger started connecting, I also didn't want to kind of be in the way of what they were building between them. Oh. So it's hard enough when you're dating a married woman and he's and the husband's in the picture and knows about what's going on. So I wanted to allow them to build some intimacy and some bonding and that kind of stuff. So that's, that's my reasoning, uh, part of my reasoning for Kenya and I not engaging in sexual intercourse at this time but it's had only positive effects on our relationship because again, we, we're great friends and we share intimacy and- And I keep planning, partners. I keep planning when we're gonna go and have sex. <laughs> go into a part three of this. We were just trying to just wrap this up, but I don't know, Alexis, Charles, which I, with, we, who, who? <laughs> this is, I'm trying to process. Um, but you know what? I want to take a moment and, um, you know, um, Kenya and Rakim and Tiger, um, as we're, we're going to just tap into this just a little bit more into the sexuality pieces that you're talking about. But we just want, want everyone, our listeners to know, where can they follow you uh, right now? ProgressiveLoveAcademy.com, Progressive Love Academy on Instagram, Progressive Love Academy on Facebook, Juju Mama on Twitter. Yep. And you can also find our That's book right. online. I, I knew the Juju Mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we write books. This is one of my uh, later books, The Art of Open Relating. Uh, Ken, you already showed you the Uplevel Communication book. So we write about this stuff. We teach about it. We're uh, the best. We have two more books coming out in the next couple months. I keep Super stressing we're the best. Too. We're the best on the planet. And it's, it's going to come down to the facts of everybody is getting real now. 
you know, so they not, everybody realized the fantasy is broken. It's, it was never real. Mm. And so now we just sitting here like, okay, everybody come on down. Cause we've well, been well, here Hold, hold on, Kenya. We, we're going to take that into the, into the next segment. We're going to take that, take, keep that energy for like 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> hey, and so, you know what, Alexis, where can they find you? Yeah, so uh, you guys can find me at I am Miss Alexo on Instagram. I am M S L E X O, uh, and on Twitter you can find me at the Real Miss Alexo. And then yes. my individual podcast uh, is a little more of Alexis. Absolutely. And so, Charles, where can they find you, sir? I'm gonna make Type in Charles James on Facebook. Live. You can find me no on Instagram. Fear. At like underscore pop. Charles Super in charge. That's C H A R L E S E in charge. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be right back after these messages because they're going to. It's a lot. <laughs> During the quarantine. Coming in hot. Just like more people to, to stay safe. Are there any more husbands? Nice with the flow. Just like the demeanor. Nothing aware of. There might be some.